Hello everyone and welcome to another Stormworks video. In this video, we're going to be building a auto return to home black box. Now, this is a little black box that you can add into any of your creations here in Stormworks. As always, we'll go over the components that you're going to need. Along with that, we'll show you how to connect everything up. And finally, we'll go and test it out here in the world of Stormworks. Now, if you're enjoying this video, comment below and what else you'd like to see in my future videos. Why there? Don't forget that like and subscribe button. And click a little bell icon to be notified of my upcoming content as soon as it gets posted. So all said, let's get straight into it and get started with this video. So to get started, the first thing that kind of inspired me to go and build this is that on the dedicated servers, we have a few of these helicopters already built uh, and placed out. Now that's all great and people join the server, which is fantastic. They go in and they fly these helicopters around and then they decide they want to disconnect. Now, the major issue here is that when they disconnect, these helicopters stay out in the world. Now, there's no way of us actually getting them back because we spawned them in using a mission. You can't actually return them to home. So the whole point of this is that we want a black box that will go and fly these helicopters back to our main base for us automatically. And how we're we going to achieve that is with a couple different things. The first thing is with these helicopters, obviously they just take normal control. However, on every seat that we find in Stormworks, there is a occupied and not occupied node. Okay, so there's one node. It's either gonna send on signal if it's occupied and it's gonna send nothing if it's not occupied. So that's how we're going to achieve this, is that when a player is flying around like normal, let's say they're just flying around the island and they say, oh, I'm just gonna go and disconnect. Well, they can do that. Luckily on our server, we have a remove player on disconnect. So what it does is actually removes that player's body, which means that seat is now unoccupied, but the helicopter is still on. So this is where we want this little black box to take over. And we're gonna be using that seat to tell it to do that. So that's where we're gonna start off by actually building. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just gonna go back into our workshop here and we're actually gonna be building on top of a really existing microprocessor. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and open up our helicopter. Okay, so there's our helicopter just over here. We can then go and grab our microprocessor. Now the microprocessor I'm going to be using for this video is going to be Tajin's Autopilot. If I'm correct, it's Tajin's Autopilot. It's just over here. It's the fully configurable GPS Autopilot. Okay, the reason why I'm using this is that it's got so many cool features on it already uh, is that we don't have to go and redo. Okay, that's the main reason why we are using this Autopilot and not any other one or building our own. Okay, so. Now that we've got the autopilot, as I said, we're going to be building on top of it. So we're adding features and also removing features from that. But the first thing we want to overcome is a way to fly this helicopter manually. Okay, we don't want the autopilot just to always be in control. We want to fly it manually. Now, how we're going to achieve that is that how I've got this helicopter set up is that everything from the seat is going into this custom gyro made by um, Urine Wand. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to divert this composite node into our actual autopilot. And then from our autopilot, we're then going to go into our gyro. Okay, so if we have manual control, it just skips this. If we don't have manual control, then it's using this and then it's feeding it back into the gyro. Okay, quite simple so far. So let's go into our GPS autopilot and we're going to start off by just getting rid of a couple nodes that we don't need. I don't need the bearing, I don't need distance. I do not need ETA, I do not need ready, and I do not need the composite out there. Okay, so there's a few there. We will be getting rid of two other ones, but not right now. So the first thing we need to do is go and add our composite in. So this is gonna be coming from our seat. Okay, it's gonna be composite. We also add, add a out, and that's gonna be going back into our gyro. Okay, so we can go to our composite and we're gonna change that to out. Okay, perfect. Once we're inside there, ignore everything else that's going on here just go and take our two composites for now we as I said we can just ignore that we'll come back to that in a few minutes okay so we need a way of taking all the data from this composite back through and relaying it okay so how we're going to achieve that is we're going to start by using a read so we're going to go have some reads we're going to have four of those one for the pitch one for the roll one for the collective etc Okay, so we need four of those. And how it works is on every seat, okay, so if I go back onto the seat here and I go to our composite, you will notice that we have different numbers. 
Okay, occupied is number 32. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 hotkeys are just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we have, for example, A and D, which is roll. That is going to be one number. We have WS, which is pitch, which is number two. Up and down collective, which I think is four. And then we have left and right yaw, which is three. Okay, so we're going to be using those numbers. We can go back into our mic presser here. You can see this is one. This one's going to be two. That's going to be for pitch. Three is going to be for our your and then four is going to be for our collective okay along with that we also want to do the numbers one through six and 32 okay those are on offs okay so let's go and grab those so we'll need seven of those one two three four five six seven okay don't need the extra one okay so that's reading one two three four five six and last one is 32 that is the seat occupied so we'll come back to that one just now okay so data comes in via the seat okay and then it's going to go back into the out of the gyro okay we are going to split it up in a few minutes but at the moment this is what we need okay so we'll go and grab that and we'll also grab our number here okay once we've got that we can then just go and relay it increase this we want six numbers and we want four numbers here okay perfect so you can see here that's just simply just passing through at the moment we haven't diverted any of those signals into anything else just yet okay and we're kind of laying the foundation for this whole mic press is about doing all this okay so you can see we've got all this coming in so far now ideally once we've got this all connected we should be able to just go and update it go and reconnect our composite into the actual autopilot and then send it back into the gyro now that should just work okay so if we go and spawn in and start the helicopter up should be able to just go and increase throttle yep throttle's working perfectly we can obviously go and use our roll etc 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 that is all working as we want perfect happy days let's go and bring that back now what we want to do is we want to start actually telling the system if that seat is not occupied start using this autopilot okay and that's what we're going to be doing and to achieve that we're just going to grab some switch boxes okay so we're just going to grab some numerical switch boxes just over here we'll need three of them because there's three things that we want to change we want to change the roll sorry i lie we want to change the pitch the yaw and the collective okay so we know that our roll is one our pitch is two and then our yaw is three and our collective is four okay so what we're going to do is using a switch box here we're going to say hey if the seat which is this if it's occupied we want to go and get manual control so this is this so we're going to use the on here okay for these ones perfect now if it's controlled manually it's then going to pass through straight into our gyro however if it's not occupied so if that's not getting a signal it's going to get an off number and that off number is going to be coming from our autopilot so this is where we can start looking at this autopilot okay you'll see here this autopilot has two outputs one is for steering and one is for throttle well we want to steal that throttle and we want to take it and we want to put it against our pitch now we know our pitch is this one here which is number two okay same goes as our steering our steering we know is the yaw so our yaw is number three so we can go and steal that okay so that's great we can probably get rid of those two now because we don't need them okay don't need those nodes at all anymore okay once we go back in we have another issue the next issue is that the controls that we usually get from the seat range from one to negative one. However, from this autopilot, we're not actually limiting them. We're telling give it any number we want, as long as it works. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to go and clamp the numbers that we're getting from the autopilot. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and add two clamps here. So one will be there and another one will be here. And we're gonna say clamp that and then go into where it needs to go which is up here and clamp this one and then send it up into here okay and we're just going to clamp it with a one to negative one okay quite simple so far okay so now that we have that we're going to stop there and we're going to just get the rest of the controls in and that is going to be our gps 
Okay, you can see here GPS X position, X target, Y position, and Y target. And how we're going to do that is we need to add a GPS block over on our microprocessor. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a GPS block. We will also need a compass input, so we know which direction we're heading in. So compass, there we go, compass sensor. Okay, make sure please you do place this forward. Okay, it needs to be forward on your creation. And the last thing is we'll need a way to enter in our home base. Now you can go into, back into the microprocessor itself and literally just go and put a constant number if you want to. Okay, and tell the system where your home base is. But for the purposes of this video right now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a keypad. This way I can go and change our home base location on the fly. Okay, so I'm just gonna place it over there. Once we've got that done, I'm just gonna reconnect everything that we need to reconnect. So you can see here, compass input is right there. We also have our X position, or well, that's going from here, so X. We also have our Y, so that's going from the GPS block. We have our desired X target, which is A from our keyboard, and Y target, which is B from our keyboard. Okay, so we have all those controls set up right now. Lastly, what we want to do is we also want to get some electricity to everything. So we'll get that all connected up with electricity. Now, in theory, what we should be able to go and do is that should now go and fly us back. Okay, it doesn't affect our actual collective currently. It should just actually instruct our actual steering and also our pitch. Now, you might want to go and tweak all the settings on Tajin's actual autopilot to however you want it. You can see here, there's a whole bunch of settings. For example, steering multiplier, I'm gonna put that at two, so you're always gonna have a times two. Uh, minimal throttle for steering, doesn't really bother me too much. I'm gonna leave that as is. Target distance threshold, uh, let's put that at, let's go 40, so 40, about 40 meters before we hit our target. Uh, acceleration time one, deacceleration time, let's go for about five meters, cool, and throttle limit's good. So now we can just go and enter in our home base. We should be able to then start it up. Okay, once we start it up, we should be able to fly it normally like a normal helicopter. Okay, so just out of the hangar here. And we can go and turn and move around as much as we want to. We should then be able to jump out of our seats and the helicopter should go and fly turn. So you can see it's turned back to our home base. It should now pitch itself. Now you can limit the pitches if you want to and the roll and everything else. You can clamp that down quite a bit. I'm pretty happy with this. Yep, and you can see we're almost not at our location. Great. However, the thing is not landing. We want it to land when it gets to that destination. Okay, so that's where the next part of this is going to work. So let's go bring it back into our base. Okay, we can go and grab our microprocessor again. Let's go and open it up. And now we want to have a look at our collective okay so this is this block just over here okay so at the moment it's only getting a input from our manual seat when we're actually in our seat well we have no input when we're not in our seat so what we want to do is we want to add a altitude hold system in here okay so what we're going to do is we're going to build one quickly I'm not going to teach you how to build an altitude hold system it's very basic okay I have done a video on it so if you want to do that go check it out but pretty much all you need is a pit that PID is then going to go into our control for our collective. We're then going to tell it, hey, I want the PID to be active when we're not in the seat. So we need a knock block. Okay. We're going to go add that in over there. And we're going to say, hey, when I'm not in the seat, I want that PID to be active. Okay. Once we have that, we need our set point. Now, our set point can be anything you want it to be. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to go and make our set point, let's go 50. Okay. I recommend about 200 because that way it will clear most of the mountains. Our process variable is going to be altitude. Okay, so we need to go and add an altitude block in. Okay, so I'm just going to go and add alt. Perfect, and make that a number input. Perfect. Let's go and grab that. And let's go and add that. Happy days. Okay, so that should now go and fly at a set altitude. However, we want the system to land itself once it gets to that target distance. Now, luckily for us, built into this autopilot that Tajin has made, there is a ready button. It's just over here from this logic node, just over here. So we wanna tell the system, hey, is when you're ready, go and land. So we wanted to switch this number, which is now 50 to zero. So we're gonna go grab a switch box once again. Okay, just a normal numerical switch box. We're gonna put it here and we're gonna say, hey, when you're ready, 
go and put zero, okay, which is going to be zero here. And that's then going to go into our set point. When you're not ready, we're going to use the altitude of 50, which is just over here. Now, once again, this PID doesn't know one or minus one or zero from our seat. All it knows is tens, twenties, hundreds, doesn't matter. Okay, depending on what settings we put into it in a few seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clamp the PID. Okay, this way we ensure we're only going to get a maximum of one and a negative of minus one. Okay, so I'm just going to go and clamp it. So here and let's put a negative minus one. Settings for the PID, uh, listen, this is up to you. Um, you might need to tweak this more. I'm just going to put in some quite generic settings that I think are going to work. Okay, you, as I said, you might have to tweak it quite a bit. It's once again, it's not a tutorial on how to build a um, altitude hold system or how to tweak a PID. Okay, so we've got those settings and we should now be able to go and update that. We can then go and connect our actual altitude so you can see altitude let's go and connect that up to altitude and we should be able to go there and spawn that in okay great so we got that spawned in now let's go to our keypad set our home base go into our pilot seat turn the engine on let's go and fly it like a normal helicopter once again this time i'm just going to fly it into let's go into a different direction there we go and let's go and fly off and now, in theory, we should be able to go jump out the seat. The helicopter should go and turn to our home base. It has. Altitude is increasing, as you guys can see. 46, 47, 50. Okay. And you can now see we're flying towards our home base. And we should start slowing down here. Yep. And we should stop dropping our altitude in a couple seconds. Yep, there we go. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our altitude is dropping. Okay, it's rising up again because we got too far away from that, which means that our, we need to add more de, de acceleration time, okay, because it's going way too fast and it's also pitching quite a bit. So we're going to go and tweak that. So let's go back and let's tweak it. So we're going to de acceleration time. We need to just put that to about seven. And also, we're going to go and limit the pitch. Now, pitch is just over here, which is this one down here. So we're going to say negative 0.5 and let's do and 0.5. Okay, so we're going to limit the pitch there. So it shouldn't pitch, it shouldn't pitch too much. So let's go spawn that back in. In the meantime, it's going to go and put it back to daytime here for us. Okay, let's go and put our home base in once again. Get the engine started up. Let's go fly off into a random area. Okay, so let's go and fly down there. Okay, and now let's go and jump out of the seat. Helicopter should turn itself. It should go and climb its altitude, which it is climbing up. I said I recommend about 200 here to avoid all the mountains and things, but you can play with it. It's now going to pitch forward. You can see we've clamped it quite a bit, so the pitch is not as violent as it was earlier. It should start slowing itself down here. There we go. We're now in about 100 meters, 80 meters, 70, 50, decreasing, 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 decreasing. And there we go. We've now got a fully controlled autopilot helicopter. Okay, and I can prove that once again, if we go and get back in the seat, we should be able to just fly away with manual controls. Okay, so now we're back into manual controls because we are occupying that seat. I'm going to go and leave the helicopter somewhere random. Let's go and put it just over here. Okay, and imagine that I disconnect, my body gets removed. Okay. That helicopter in theory should automatically be flying back to our base now and you can see it coming along now there we go it's decreasing it's getting to around 50 altitude and it's going to continue flying until it gets to this location and it should go and land itself now you can repurpose this black box for different things it doesn't have to be used for a dedicated server this is just my use case but i can see quite a few different use cases for it there's also different ways of doing this. I just found that was the most easiest way to do it. I think, there we go, helicopter's landing. 
You might need to tweak it, add some more controls and things, but this is pretty much, as I said, the most basic way I think you can probably go and do it. Uh, you could also add in a system to tell the system, hey, once it has landed, to go turn the engine off if you wanted to. Um, I'm just going to go and get in it. I actually just turn it off manually. Uh, but that's completely up to you uh, on how you want to on how you want to do it. I think it's a cool little idea. Uh, I think it's something that is missing at the moment in multiplayer or at least in dedicated servers. Uh, so I think it's a pretty cool feature. So I think we'll go ahead and end today's video over there. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it entertaining and informative as always. And we'll see you in the next one.